So good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the neural networks uh, in interactive instance segmentation. The main purpose behind the interactive instance segmentation is to segment an object in an image uh, that user wants to get, and he will identify that to the system. The users may use various input methods for that. Like, for example, the user may select, uh, may use a rectangular selection tool or the freehand selection tool for identifying this image, or mouse clicks or strokes. They may be positive or negative. Each of them used to show that this area of the image belongs to the object, the instance the user wants to segment out from the image. And uh, the negative one shows that this area of the image does not belong to that desired instance. Like, for example, in this case, we want to select the cat's eye to change the color, for example. The user would click the eye in the image. The algorithm, well, it doesn't know yet uh, what the user wants to select, uh, be that uh, an eye or the cat as a whole. So you, the algorithm would select the whole object. After that, the user would make the negative click to show that uh, on the on on the cat's head to show that uh, he doesn't want uh, the cat to be selected but he wants only the eye of the cat and after that the algorithm will continue doing something with the image it can do various things like for example interactive instance segmentation is um, widely used uh, in photo editing when uh, we cut an object from one image and paste it to another image or when we apply filters to those images. Another application which is less known to the general public but is uh, heavily used uh, in science and research is annotating the training and test data sets. So the quality of the algorithm a lot depends a lot on the accuracy of selecting the instances in the image. Such data sets are annotated by operators using interactive instance segmentation tools. And uh, here we show just two examples uh, from the image stock. The actual data set, the actual models are tested on several popular data sets uh, which were specifically designed for this purpose. These data sets are very small compared to the most popular data sets used in computer, computer vision. So they contain just several thousands of images uh, with uh, a few instances in them. There's only one data set which was specifically designed for interactive segmentation purposes, which consists of, it's not that easy to measure the accuracy of those algorithms because most of them require a certain user interaction. So here we use such a metric as a number of clicks, NUC. It shows the number of clicks a user must use to select this instance. Usually 0.9 is the target IOU we compare with. So how many clicks do you need to make uh, to achieve the 0.9 level? Sometimes an object may, may be so 
complex uh, that uh, a reasonable number of clicks uh, is not sufficient for selecting it. Uh, that is why usually uh, 20 the researchers apply the cutoff threshold at 20 clicks. One of the most popular methods uh, is the deep grab cut. The main idea is very simple. We take uh, the encoder decoder model, which is used for automatic image annotation and segmentation, and we would add some additional information for that, like the map of distance transformation. This map shows uh, the distance to the border. This way the model would know which part of this object is located inside the selection frame and uh, which part or which pixel is outside of the selection frame. But uh, this method is not interactive. You cannot tell the model that it has to change the output. But we managed to make, to add more interactivity to this method. We realized uh, that we have to send two additional images to the, as input uh, to the model. They would contain information on the positive and negative clicks. So once the user has made an additional click, be that a negative or a positive one, we would run uh, this data through the model again. But we faced an unexpected deficiency of this method because, well, quite often uh, models can give us uh, the unpredictable output when the model may neglect all the instructions of the user. Like, for example, in this case, we tried to select the spoon. We make a positive click to highlight this spoon, but since the spoon is very bright and it's very difficult to select this specific object, we make a negative click trying to focus the algorithm on the spoon, but the model just neglects all the instructions of the user. So here we see that all, most of the negative clicks have been ignored, and they are still considered to be part of this object, even though that the user has explicitly said that this part of the image does not belong to the object. We added an optimization process to modify the segmentation map so that it's completely aligned with the user instructions to overcome this uh, deficiency that we have discussed earlier. So we send the same additional information to the input of the model and having completed this CNN pass, we make a decision whether we are satisfied with the result or not. If we are not satisfied, we run the optimization process. The way it works is that we will resend the input as many times as required to achieve the satisfactory result. So here, for example, we send the user click, the initial distance map, and we see the results before the optimization. We see that a certain part of the table has been highlighted, which does not belong to that. So we change uh, the input map until uh, the selection in the image will be satisfactory to the user. 
And we see that uh, only after a certain number of iterations, uh, we managed to achieve the desired results. And uh, the output of this model matches the user instructions. So this is a wonderful achievement in itself, but unfortunately, it takes time to do that. Since the inputs to the neural network does, do not change, at each iteration, we have to make two passes uh, through the neural network. And since we may need uh, several dozens of such iterations, this doubles the number of passes through the neural network. Even if it's a ultra-fast network, 0.3 seconds, for example, uh, it may take a few seconds or a few dozen seconds to complete the task, uh, but uh, clearly that's far from being interactive for the user. In my lab, in my lab, we developed a new method for this optimization process, uh, which had a much faster speed. Instead of changing the inputs to the neural network, we decided to modify some of the additional parameters uh, which are added to the model at later stages. So in this slide, you can see the layout of this neural network. This is basically the typical segmentation network, which consists of the backbone and the decoder. So we proposed adding a few extra parameters to the decoder, global parameters, which modify the whole attribute. And it turns out that uh, we can update uh, those parameters to achieve better convergence uh, with the user objectives. But in this case, we don't have to make the whole pass through the network. We only need to make the pass from the input to this parameter. And it takes a lot less time to do that. So. Another application for that is the zoom in, as we call it, or t better targeting. Like, for example, here we see a cat uh, which uh, has suddenly ran out to the pitch. The user wants to select this cat. So if we look at it closer, we would see that, uh, well, it's pretty much accurate uh, with some inc inconsistencies around the edges but the object has been localized correctly, which means that we would not have to send the whole image to this network again. So instead, we would send just a fraction of this image to the neural network by expanding the selection selection frame, selection mask. So the red rectang rectangle is uh, the initial selection frame, and the yellow rectangle is the updated selection frame, which gives a much higher accuracy. We tested the model using various methods, and we see that the quality remains the same while the speed increases dramatically. Plus, we improved the actual performance of this method by incorporating the state-of-the-art image segmentation research. The first method was using a high-resolution attribute recognition architecture. With this architecture, at each calculation stage, we keep uh, the high resolution map in, 
previous generations of the model uh, we dropped the image resolution due to average pulling, for example. But here, at each calculation, we keep the main resolution and create an additional lower resolution branch. Using this architecture, we are able to keep the main attributes and additional attributes, uh, and which are the concatenation, contain the high level and contextual characteristics of the image. Plus, we added the object context representation to the model. By making an assumption about the object at the first stage and by updating the attributes for each pixel, by identifying the likeness of those pixels to the neighboring pixels which gives a uh, much better accuracy to our to our model compared with other models and also using larger data sets can increase the accuracy even further so we have published the demo you are welcome to use it it's available on our GitHub. So to sum up, I would like to say that interactive segmentation can be implemented by mixing an additional channel of information with all the user inputs so, and using better models and larger data sets can dramatically increase the accuracy compared with the state-of-the-art results. So, this is it. Thank you for your attention. I will be happy to take your questions.